Uh, good morning all, Emmanuel. It's great to be back again uh, and seeing you all and uh, connecting with you. Hallelujah. It's been a while since we connected together, since the pandemic in March. And here we are six months almost later. But God has been faithful. He's kept us. And we are the ones who believe in him. And so we've thrived, not survived. And we've come out of it with great energy and with great enthusiasm. And so this morning as we gather, we must have the confidence that our God is with us and he's able to make all grace continue to abound with us. I want to share with you this morning a few thoughts on a subject that God has laid on my heart. Hallelujah. And it will become very clear as we proceed. Hallelujah. Our main texts are going to be Genesis uh, chapter 50, verses 19 uh, to 21. We're going to also look at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. We're going to look at uh, Isaiah 53, verses 3, 4, and 5, uh, and many others as we go along. So what am I going to talk about this morning? Rejection. Hallelujah. Rejection. And, and this is a, a thing that everyone, it's a universal thing. There is no exemption. Pastors go through it. Popes go through it. Ordinary folk go through it. Christians go through it. Hallelujah. It affects every family. It affects every facet of life. But often the issue is that it is not recognized for what it is. You know, sometimes people don't even know that things that are happening in their life are as a result of them being rejected. So this rejection can be actual or perceived. Whether it's actual or perceived is irrelevant. The effects are exactly the same. You look at this list that I'm going to read off to you now of people who you know now or heard of very, very successful. Some of the most successful people on the planet, dead or alive, Elvis Presley. He was rejected and told to go back and drive trucks because he couldn't hack it as a musician. His vocal uh, content wasn't acceptable. Same thing happened to, you heard about Beatles? Yeah, the 60s icon iconic band. They were rejected by Decca in West London because the four of them made a sound that was terrible. They were told categorically they were never going to make it. What about Einstein? Dear old Einstein, clever, brilliant. He could be holding a whole physics department right, all on his own if he was still alive today. He couldn't get into an Austrian polytechnic. <laughs> get it? Are you getting a picture, beloved? This thing is pervasive. Darwin, Oprah Winfrey, and the names go on and on and on and on and on. And you realize that it's not just the poor that are rejected or the rich that are rejected. It affects every strata of society. So what is rejection? It is when somehow the verdict comes out or you get a sense that the verdict has gone against you. That you have been examined and found unsuitable not up to the standard and therefore you're not part of the group you're not part of the family you're not being promoted you know you were the wrong sex you were the wrong uh, uh, what, what do you call it uh, height or your elocution wasn't great amen but we are not so i tell you as bleak a picture as rejection is and its effects are we will find this morning that there is a perfect remedy for us who are in Christ. Amen? So, how does rejection occur? What are some of the antecedents or causes of rejection? We look at us and we know that rejection is actually in our souls. It occurs when, number one, even before birth, prenatal. You know, the family line that has been corrupted by a spirit of rejection, that can go down the line until it is dealt with 
acknowledged and dealt with. Otherwise, you will pass it on. I will pass it on like spiritual genes to the next generation. And on and on it goes. So that, that's number one. One important thing is spiritual genes passed on through generational sin uh, 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 and curses. Hallelujah. So this is before uh, concep conception. There is also rejection that can occur at and during uh, pregnancy. You see, if your mom or your dad or both say to themselves, oh, we weren't ready for a child, right there is rejection. Right there, somebody is passing a judgment as important as your parents have already passed judgment that you were either the wrong sex or you were not, uh, uh, the time wasn't right for you to come. Where they wanted to be, uh, have a baby, maybe two years down the line, you've come. And someone somewhere in their heart has opened their heart and said, uh uh, he or she has arrived at the wrong time. Or even we, don't, we didn't want a child. That's rejection into your spirit. And even though you're not fully, uh, what do you call, grown uh, and born, living on the earth, you still will have that if the effects of rejection upon you. You will exhibit it as though it was spoken to you when you were seven, where you can actually uh, begin to understand things in concrete terms. Where if you're a child of divorce, then also, you will, and sometimes uh, children who, are, who have experienced divorce in the family, right, come to a place where they know that one or the other of the parents, or both, have, have rejected them. So that, that can happen. Sibling uh, favoritism. Maybe your mother or father loved one of your siblings more than you, and all along you have been harboring this, uh, what do you call it, resentment and bitterness because of that rejection. Hallelujah. You have several causes. A childhood trauma. If you suffer childhood trauma, the chances are that you will feel that the very people who should have loved you, the very people you trust, have rejected you. How painful is that? How painful is that? On, on the unwanted or inconvenient child. Failure, one big problem with rejection, cause of rejection is this, that when parents in particular refuse or are unable to give and show love, this is a fundamental issue when it comes to children uh, and even adults feeling, feeling, feeling rejected. And, 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 and when people feel rejected, you know, they come out in three, typically in three types. There are three characters that emerge out of any state of rejection. Let's, let's go through them. There is the one that just is not able to survive this thing. You know, so they go from misery, they go from self, uh, lack of self-esteem, they go through, oh, I might as well end, end it all. And very often, they either injure themselves or do the act of ending it all. Then there is the one that puts up a wall, a defensive wall. So they're saying, well, this rejection won't hurt me. So I, 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 I won't bother with it, you know. I can deal with it. My dealing with it is to block it, to ignore it, to make, uh, really not even acknowledge it. And they do not do well either. There's a third group uh, who fight back. Ah, you don't like me. You rejected me, right? I'll show you. I'll show you actually that I'm better than what you thought. I am better than, and I can achieve whatever it is. For instance, when Einstein couldn't get into the polytechnic, now his aim is to work so hard is to go all out to prove that he's better than the judgment. That, and that sometimes that can lead to uh, 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 rebellion, it, it can le lead to uh, overzealousness to try and please man. That is wrong. That is wrong. But there's a fourth way which we will come to tonight. I reserve the fourth way until the end. You look at all these people I enumerated to you, they've been rejected. And maybe you're listening to me this morning and you feel rejected. Even during the pandemic, maybe people you thought should have got in touch with you, things happened, uh, uh, incidents have happened, and you think, oh, they don't love me. I feel rejected. I don't belong. But this morning, 
this morning. If only you look to God, hallelujah, you will see that uh, rejection is a pervasive issue in society. Look at Joseph. When we look at the story of Joseph, this is a man whose story begins in Genesis chapter 37. And it occupies 14 full chapters. In fact, I don't know of anyone whose biography or who's been written about so much in, 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 in the Bible. He comes top. He's got more chapters than Abraham on him. He's got more chapters than Isaac. I mean, that, that goes without saying. Isaac is the, the least of the uh, uh, four. Even Jacob doesn't compare. 14 chapters. But it starts all with envy, ending eventually in rejection. So his own brothers, Kit and Kin, set him up. They hate him so much because of the love of his father for him. They sell him. They were minded to kill him, remember. But they sell him now to Ishmaelites, who take him to uh, Egypt. He ends up in Pharaoh, uh, uh, Potiphar's house. There too, hallelujah, this man seems to be full of trouble. There too, the wife wants to have an affair with him. He refuses because of the godly character. And I believe this is it. Here it is. This guy always had the plan of God and the purpose of God. Everything that happened to him in his whole life, he interpreted everything in the light of God's economy. He didn't look at anything from a human standpoint. Even when his brother sold him, he wouldn't know. Remember, he was only 17 years old, a teenager really. By the time he gets out of prison to interpret Pharaoh's dreams and was put second in command, this guy is about 30 now. And guess what? The very people that have rejected him, that have, re that have resented him, that are bitter against him, that did wickedly against him, are now coming. Because there's a second farming in the land. And now as they come, who are they coming to? They're coming to the very person that they rejected. Does that ring a bell? Does that actually ring a bell? Isn't that talking about the same thing as the Savior? Hallelujah. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Amen. Hallelujah. And so what we have here is, is rejection in, the, uh, in uh, Joseph's life. And he's rejected. He calls for his family to come back and see him. He has compassion on them. And he, he's beckoning the, his brothers to go and bring the youngest brother, Benjamin, who was left at home with, with father. Eventually, they come. They come. And as things transpire, you know, he, he gives them uh, uh, sustenance. And he says, go bring my father too. And he, they go and they bring the whole family is now gathered. And as he stands there. Tears are filling his eyes. Why? Because he was rejected. And now the very people that rejected him are standing in their hour of need. What would you and I have done? But this Joseph, a man full of the spirit of the living God, a man full of godly character, a man who knew the times of the seasons, hallelujah, Gave them everything and more. And you know, at the end, in chapter 50 of this story, his brothers are standing there. Their father now dead. Who is to protect them? And Joseph now, by this time, knows the identity. He knows who they are. And now, they're cowering. And he says to them, <laughs> Am I God to judge you? You meant this thing for evil. But my God always meant it for good. He sent me ahead right to Egypt here so that I might prepare for a time like this for you and all who are in need. Hallelujah. And so there, right there, is a story that we've read and we've interpreted 
rightly in other ways. But beloved, underneath this story is a massive rejection issue which Joseph had to face. And he passed it with flying, flying colors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in case you're wondering, in case you're wondering, how about our Lord Jesus Christ? He was rejected at every turn. L listen to this. The, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And all who hate me whisper about me. Hallelujah. So Jesus, the son of God, was rejected. If the world hates you, keep in mind, he says, that they hated me first. At every turn, the Pharisees and the people rejected Jesus. In fact, it wasn't just rejection. They wanted to kill him. They just wanted rid of him because his message wasn't for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Savior was rejected. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the punishment for our peace was placed actually on him. Instead of us uh, uh, going through all those things because we deserve it, he came from heaven. And the Bible says he, 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 he gave authority. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But to as many as received him, he gave them authority, exousia, to become children of God, born not of the will of man or the blood, hallelujah, but by the will of God, to as many as received him. And so for us who have received him, we need to understand that if we, whatever we've gone through, he is in touch with our infirmities. And he's able to deliver us, hallelujah, from whatever we've gone through. All we need to do is to understand that he was bruised, that we might be healed. He was wounded, that we might have life. He was punished, that I might have peace. Hallelujah. We have the remedy. Or Jesus, rather, has the remedy. And all we need to do is to come to him. Hallelujah. Acknowledging that we have a problem with this issue called, called rejection. Let us look at the cross. And if we think that men rejected Jesus, hallelujah. When we look at Matthew chapter uh, 27, we hear these faith, faithful words. Eli, Eli, Lamak Sabatani. Who do you think was speaking that? It was Jesus speaking that. Where? On the cross. On the way to providing you and me the remedy for everything we need to buy us back to God and to redeem uh, and to save us. He was being rejected. Not just by men. Not just by his disciples. Not just by the leader of the future church, Peter. But by all twelve. One despised him so much, rejected him so much, that he actually sold him. The eleven, oh, they were cowering. They were running away. But Peter had to go further. Three times he says, I don't know you. Do you think that's rejection? You bet. I think so. And yet, right at the end of the Gospel of John, where's Peter? He's been marvelously restored. You see, in doing, in restoring Peter, our Lord was, uh, and saving us, he was showing us a way out or back from rejection and the bitterness. Hallelujah. And the wounding heals when we come and we hand it to him. We need to see his example, beloved, and know that he is the only one who can bring healing in our innermost beings, our souls and our spirits. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we come to a place where even the father has rejected his son for you and for me. So that this issue of rejection or any other issue that we face is got a remedy. It's called the cross and the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do we, what do, we do? What do we do when we, when we are rejected? We turn to the Lord. When Jesus hung on the cross and he said, it is finished, he meant exactly that. It is finished. It is finished. Because it is finished, you and I can live and move on. Even in the deepest re uh, rejection that we suffer, every wound that we have suffered in this life can be healed. In fact, I will go and say, that's wrong. It's healed in Jesus' name. Is healed in Jesus' name. So we, we see 
as we come to this issue that the only place is to come to the cross where there is divine exchange. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3. It says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing in, in Christ Jesus. In Christ, when we acknowledge that we have a problem and we come to Christ, and we forgive those who have hurt us and ask for forgiveness for Christ, we appropriate all our heritage which is in Christ, some of which I'm enumerating in Ephesians chapter 1. When you got a moment in, in the quiet and the stillness of today, have a look. Go to the Word of God. Meditate upon Ephesians chapter 1. Maybe verses 3, just to verse 7, and see what Christ has done for you and me. He has blessed us in Christ. He has chosen us from before the foundations of the world. Hallelujah. He has adopted us into his family. And if that wasn't enough, verse 6 says, we have been accepted in the beloved. What about verse 7? He has redeemed us. And so you see, blessed, chosen, adopted, accepted in the beloved, and redeemed. What more could we want? If Jesus passes a verdict that he accepts me, then what is the mere rejection of a man? As painful as it is. The Bible says, if my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will always be with me. That's a promise from God, beloved. And what we need to do is to give everything to Jesus. The hymn writer says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs and sins to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. But you see, the refrain or the chorus has something for us. He says, we, we worry and we are anxious and we suffer because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. God is doing uh, anything amongst us, he's doing it only in Christ. And so as we accept Christ, as we live by him and let his life live in us, things like rejection, insults, wounding in our spirit. Beloved, some of us have been saved. We've been prayed for. We've been anointed. How many times? And yet there is an issue down there. And sometimes it is because these pervasive and hidden issues of rejection are working negatively in our lives. That's got nothing to do with being saved. You can be saved, as we all are, and still suffer these consequences. The remedy still is the blood. But you and I have to come to an understanding. And we need to claim that remedy. Hallelujah. We need to claim it. Just like we said yes when he called us unto salvation. Our healing is already done. Our uh, peace is already purchased. Our adoption is already done. The papers have been signed. It's all legal. It's all kosher. Everything is done, but I need to buy into it. I need to live in, in, in it, hallelujah, in order to be fully immersed. And that means drawing near to Christ and leaving every insult and every hurt to him, hallelujah, and not worrying about me taking uh, retribution. So how do I know that I'm healed of rejection or any hurt? It is this, that I love God and I live in loving obedience to him. Hallelujah. And as his love and his grace flows through me, it flows into me, but it flows also through me to the world around me. There will be no bitterness. If I've really let go, there will be no resentment. These are the children of rejection. Many, many more children and offspring are spawned. But these two are the first and second children that come. I pray that this morning the Lord will burn this message into our hearts. And we all having received it will be gracious as the Lord himself has been to us so that our neighbors are also forgiven as we are forgiven. 
This is not just a quid pro quo, but it's the only way to live so that we have health spiritually, in our souls, and in our bodies. May the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, church, what a great word that was from Elder Henry. Let's keep encouraging each other to build our faith up and build the church up. Well, we come to the end of our service, but just really quickly want to highlight our Life Connect. We are starting a new Life Connect series in September called The Seven Laws of life it sounds pretty exciting actually yeah. so uh make sure you are a part of a life connect. the email will come up on the screen so make sure you jump into one also remember that we have cafe church right after service so make sure you attend details are going to be up on the screen so we've come to the end so we're going to be here next week same time same place stay blessed Ooh. <laughs> Same time, same place, stay blessed and ciao. Let's do that again. What is same it? time. You need to look, bro, because I can't not look. Stay <laughs> blessed. No, no, no. no, but can they hear? You keep on like going like. Just, yeah. just a little, little. Oh, a little. <laughs> that was too short. <laughs> you didn't finish the sentence, didn't finish the sentence <laughs> that? Please remember, next week it is same time, same place, stay, stay blessed. blessed. Ciao. ciao.